the coat of arms is the two lions here and the and the, the crowns and then the triple crowns on the um, flags on the banners the standards and then um, there's a chain that goes around the whole thing and then at the bottom of this chain here is this star and that star has um, has the letters IHS on it and those letters IHS are on well, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this in a second but the the IHS letters are on the Jesuit emblem if you don't know they're the Jesuits are not good and Francis is a Jesuit so back to the star thing um, okay so there's the IHS in in the middle and when you research that those letters are supposed to stand for in his service and it's supposed to be you know the front is in the service of Jesus Christ but we know that's not who they're talking about that's not who they serve and when you look at the star even closer you see the double cross on the four corners here or not four corners but the four you know left to right up and down and um, that cross is not good either it's you know when someone double crosses you it means they're they're a you know they're a liar they're a deceiver they've done wrong so the double cross sign is not a good thing and then um, there's these cherubs here on the four corners and uh, and you're like well, well what's the cherubs about well the that star actually stands for the royal order of the seraphim and I was like are you kidding me um, the seraphim are a high ranking class of angels and um, most likely it probably has something to do with the fallen ones so um, even though you know the wording of it is you know oh, angels and da, 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 it, it's not a good thing it, they're not these aren't good angels that they're talking about serving so um, that's what why the, the cherubs are on there they and actually they are the seraphim because when you look closely and it's also on the coat of arms itself they have the six wings so um, a seraph uh, means the meaning of it is the burning one and um, this okay let's look going down to this bottom paragraph here tradition places seraphim in the highest rank in the Christian angelic hierarchy and in the fifth rank of ten in the Jewish angelic hierarchy um, they're mentioned in the book of Isaiah to describe six winged beings that fly around the throne of God crying holy 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 now those are the good seraphim those are the ones that are in heaven that did not fall um, and it's interesting because here's the triple thing again this throne scene with its triple invocation of holiness uh, profoundly influenced subsequent theology literature and art its influence is frequently seen in works depicting angels heaven and apotheosis seraphim are mentioned as celestial beings in an influential Hellenistic work the book of Enoch and the book of Revelation 
So, and it's, it's interesting also here that this image here, this painting, is St. Francis's vision of a seraph. So, I mean, it's just crazy how all this stuff goes together. And, um, so as I said, these, that star, which is on the Swedish coat of arms. Oh my gosh, I just remember why, when I just said that, Swedish. That, the boy that supposedly had the vision of the rapture was from Sweden. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so the Seraphim appears, second century book of Enoch. 2nd century BC where they are mentioned in conjunction with cherubim as the heavenly creatures standing nearest to the throne of God they are called the Ikisat I don't know how you pronounce that which means serpents and dragons an alternative term for hell which along with the cherubim and paradise are under the rule of Gabriel in the second book in Enoch, two classes of celestial beings are equated with the seraphim and cherubim known as the phoenixes. Phoenix is also um, uh, all over, you know, many nations, Russia and many others have the phoenix on their flags. And some even say that the American Eagle that's on our seal is not, it's supposed to represent a phoenix. So, um, also it has relation to Hydra or the water serpent, which um, in the Bible is Leviathan, which is the dragon, which is Satan. Uh, it also means brazen hydras or copper serpents. Both are described as flying elements of the sun. So they are the burning one, the shining one, and this is tied back to in Genesis 3, the Nakash, which is the serpent that came in to deceive Eve. And, um, it wasn't literally a, a talking serpent. It was, it was a, a high-ranking angel, a seraphim, that came in and just was um, using magic, like putting a spell on her to get her to uh, take the bait, bite the apple. <laughs> so, um, more tie-ins to Sweden. Uh, they recently, the country. The government of Sweden recently distributed leaflets to 4.8 million homes in Sweden telling their citizens to be prepared for war and to be prepared to go for up to three months without uh, being able to get food, water, or to um, receive any kind of assistance from the government um, unless it's a dire emergency but we all know in that case uh, you probably aren't going to get any assistance so um, they're letting us know that you know that this is about to go down not just their citizens but the whole world because if that if they do go to war with Russia that's going to kick off World War Three, no doubt. Um, and that ties in directly with Mr. Paul's and his video that he published in April, um, warning about that very thing. Another tie to Sweden is, um, for those of you who may have watched my, um, video about May Day which was May 1st and the pagan evil origins of that and having ties to Beltane which is and Walpurgis which is all satanic uh, and the Maypole um, of course Sweden is one of the countries that participates in this holiday 
And interestingly enough, they, um, they celebrated, you know, it was celebrated on May 1st, but in 1952, the Swedish Parliament decided that Midsummer should always be celebrated on a weekend. And as a result, the observance um, is now varies between June 20th and 26th. So, lots of people have been putting up videos. Steve Fletcher, John Watchman for That Great Day have been putting videos about the summer solstice and, and, per, and something happening before then, which does tie into scripture. In the Song of Songs, uh, Solomon, King Solomon comes for his bride before... It's, well, it's supposed to be in the spring, um, so that would have to be before the summer solstice on June 21st. Okay, so in Song of Songs, chapter 6, verse 11, it's the bride speaking, and it also, uh, verse 12 is associated with what I'm going to share. And the bride says, I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley. Um, this would be when she is hidden away. And uh, would that refers to paradise. And to see whether the vine flourished. Uh, the vine we know is Yeshua. He says that he is the vine and we are the branches. And the pomegranates budded. And verse 12 is very interesting because it says, Or ever I was aware, so she was made to know, my soul made me like chariots of Aminadib. And the word chariots is Markaba. And when we click on that in the Strongs, it means chariot. And so when you go look up Merkaba, now it is, there is ties to Jewish mysticism, but that's because they're using it for their own vices, their own renderings. So, but it does mean in the Hebrew, it does mean chariot and refers to the throne of God described in Ezekiel. This was Ezekiel's wheel that he was um, speaking in his vision. He was describing, and here again are the seraphim. The seraphim are the ones with the six wings, and they are the ones that steer the throne. Um, there are the four living creatures, which are also in heaven in John's vision in the book of Revelation. So, this chariot that she is saying that she was made to know that she was made like a chariot. In other words, she is saying that, and this is my feeling of what the interpretation is saying, that she was transfigured and she was taken up. Just like when Yeshua ascended, he was taken up into a cloud on a chariot, just like this. Here he is on the cloud. This is, of course, supposed to be representing the throne and, and uh, the four living creatures below. Um, so I believe that that verse 12 in chapter 6 of Song of Songs is saying that she was transfigured and she was taken up. So it's interesting here too. It says, Today Jews customarily read the biblical passages, passages concerning the Merkabah in their synagogues every year on the holiday of Shavuot. And I do believe that Shavuot, because it's in the middle of the feast, the spring and the fall, it represents Yeshua. He is in the midst of the lampstand with the two witnesses on either side. It, and it goes so deep, it's so multi-layered. The two witnesses are his spring feasts, his fall feasts. They are the witnesses that will be witnessing in, in the tribulation. I believe they are the bride. And um, 
then eventually another group who was not the bride but will be the Jews that will come to Yeshua during tribulation and they will be doing their part to minister the gospel to those to the remnant that is still there um, it, it I was shown this a long time ago that Shavuot represents Yeshua because he is in the midst of everything He's, he's the one that comes to divide. So if he's dividing, he's in the middle. Sheep on the one side, goats on the other. So it's I, it very interesting that they read about the Merkaba during Shavuot. So there's been, you know, so many speculations about when true Shavuot is. And people have, you know, oh, it's this date. And those dates have come and gone. And it's this date and it's that day. I have my own... Um, speculation uh, possibly I'll do it uh, another video because it I don't believe we're there yet uh, I don't know if I'm right or not it's just another <laughs> another breadcrumb another thing to look at so um, so there's that I wanted to start with Song of Songs since it uh, basically is talking about her transformation and and the rapture of the bride the barley harvest and then next will be those who were left behind who weren't ready, the wheat harvest. And I believe that, in my opinion, my interpretation, I'm not saying that I'm right, that all those who are Yah's children who are, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be part of the wheat harvest. Um, or, if they're not part of the wheat harvest, then they will be part of the grape harvest, which will be in the fall. That could possibly be those that, that at the very last, but I also have another interpretation about that. Anyway, um, uh, next I, I want to show you the number 611 that I found on Bible Wheel, and then I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to list the um, all the verses that were chapter 6, verse 11, and that'll be it. Okay, and next I'm going to show you the number 611 uh, Torah on the Bible Wheel website. And in Exodus 24:12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And the eyes in uh, Genesis 3 7, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And that's directly tied into um, the episode in the garden with the Nakash, who was a seraph. Uh, the number 611, here's uh, a little some more things that it means uh, the Lord God of hosts Yahuwah Elohim Sabaoth it means Torah or the law aprons, loin coverings iniquity and transgression and sin plague, scourging at his right hand to resist him so all these things so far are all pointing to all the scriptures that were chapter 6 verse 11 and she conceived he will inherit foundation who has wrought and achieved this on the holy mountain I will rejoice um, and then interesting here 1st Corinthians six eleven. Um, it means mouth, and then here's Isaiah sixty-one ten. There's another six eleven, and nigh at hand. So I thought that was very interesting, and it says related numbers, which it's because I guess because it's only two numbers away is six thirteen. That's the number of um, commandments total in the Torah.
So basically, this next week is a very high watch period. Um, there are tons of people putting out videos about this week, um, leading up into uh, next week, possibly the end of the month, and possibly into the first week of July, but especially this week. So everyone, please be on high alert. Be prayed up. Be repented. Be ready to go. Pray for the lost try and share the gospel with as many people as you possibly can because we are I believe literally at the door it's it's time all the verses that he had me look up chapter 6 verse 11 and uh, beginning in the Old Testament and all the way from Genesis to Revelation and of course they all all those verses begin with judgment coming to the house of God first his people first um, and then leading into redemption of his people which is basically what the whole tribulation is about so um, it's judgment it's called Jacob's trouble for a reason it's judgment upon his people who have not accepted Yeshua as Messiah and then ultimately their redemption when they do receive him. So I had to uh, put this warning out so please take it to, to heart and um, pray, pray, pray and be ready. I'm not stating for a fact that anything will happen and you know it, it could just be um, moves on the chessboard that happen and nothing physical manifesting however I do believe the physical manifestation is about to occur so please be ready I know we're all weary myself included so with that being said I pray that you all are blessed and I will keep you all in my prayers as I ask that you keep me in yours as well. So have a blessed day and I hope to see you all soon and our Messiah. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Shalom.